In this video, we're going to talk about quadratics, but this time we're going to have something called the discriminant. Now remember, we're still trying to find the zeros of quadratics, right? So that means that something that's set up like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We're trying to find out where it crosses the x-axis. And we found in another video that we have this thing called a quadratic equation. That tells us in general how to find the zeros for any quadratic, whether it's factorable or not, right? This is the answer. Then we have something called a discriminant, which is going to tell us how many times it crosses the x-axis. So this is going to be the important piece, okay? So we're going to have something here, it's actually called the discriminant. Okay, so oddly enough, that's how it's named. Uh, good news for you, this is on your formula booklet. Discriminant. We use the symbol delta, delta for discriminant. And it's just equal to b squared minus 4 times a times c. This, thankfully, is in your formula booklet, so that's really good. Maybe I'll label that, right? So this is formula booklet. Now you have to know how to use this or else it's not very useful. Okay, so this is, yeah, sure, they tell you this, but if you don't know how to use this, it's not, it's not going to help you much. So I wanted to actually try to rewrite this quadratic equation, this time with a discriminant, because do you notice the discriminant is just a piece in the square root? So... I'm going to say this. So x then can be written as just minus b plus or minus the square root of just delta, all out over 2a. So if you went and figured out what delta was, it'll tell you your solutions and why. Now, by the way, if you were looking at this one here, the speed limit, and I like this, 360 divided by 4, well, what's that going to be? It's going to be 180 divided by 4 is 90. So 90, 2x equals 90, that means x equals uh, 45. It must be in miles per hour, I'm assuming. Let's look at the different cases for discriminant. And we'll talk about imaginary numbers in a second. We'll see why that is. So with the discriminant, and remember what the discriminant is. Remember the discriminant is equal to, I'll just remind you again, remember that it, uh, this right here is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And remember that the solutions then are always at x equals um, negative b plus or minus square root of the discriminant, all that over 2a. This is how we do the solutions, is how many times it crosses the x-axis. Well, there's a few different cases. We can have, for example, when the discriminant is greater than zero. We're going to see that happening. We're going to see, let's say we could do discriminant uh, equals zero, or we can do that when the discriminant is less than zero. Let's see what happens in each of these cases. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, we got a whole bunch of different cases. So let's see if we can actually deal with this or figure out what to do. So think about this. If your discriminant is greater than zero, what will that mean as far as your solutions go? Do you see how we're just trying to figure out what the actual answer here will be? So let me let me show you what that'll give you. So that'll give you then a solution of, uh, let's see, x equals, well, minus b, uh, yeah, I guess just plus or minus whatever that was over 2a. Because of that, there's going to be two different answers. Does that make any sense? There's going to be two, maybe I'll write it in a different color, two real roots. That's the result. That's because there's two different answers. There's minus b plus this mess over 2a, and there's minus b minus this mess over 2a. There's two different places where it crosses the x-axis, which means it could look like, I don't know, like this maybe. See, it crosses twice here and here. Maybe it's uh, negative, so maybe it's something goes like, I don't know, like this. Whoops, didn't draw it very nice. Maybe something like this. All right, here are those two of them. See, I just tried to show you two different examples. So again, delta greater than zero, two real roots, and they're different. What happens if delta equals zero? I just want to show you what happens here. So if delta equals zero, well, I have x equals minus b. Now keep in mind, it's plus or minus the square root of zero. Well, square root of zero is still zero. Plus zero minus zero means nothing. In other words, you just have this answer. Now, doesn't that look like the vertex? This is actually the uh, axis of symmetry equation. That's really interesting, isn't it? So what happens here? We say that there's, you might say there's only uh, one answer. There kind of is. You could say there's one real root, but actually we say there's two, um, we often say there's two equal real roots. Sometimes we call it a repeated root, something like that. But there's two, technically there's two solutions. It's just, it's the same. 
Now, how can a quadratic only cross the axis once? Well, it still has to be a parabola. And if you don't know, well, I'll show you. Here's an example. Maybe it goes like, maybe like this. It just touches it. And then back up again. See, it just touches it once. Technically, there's two solutions that give you the same answer. So we call it two equal real roots. And I can do the same thing in the bottom. Maybe I do something like, like this. There we go. All right. What happens if we have delta less than zero? So if this number here is negative, what happens is, uh, what's the square root? Well, let's see here. So x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of some negative number here, negative whatever that is, over 2a. Do you know what happens when you take a square root of a negative? You can't. Well, kind of. It depends if you're an SL or HL. You can't really. At least there's no... Actually, I'll, uh, maybe I'll just write it down in red here. So there's no real roots. Okay, so there's there's no real answers. That's because you can't take the square root of a negative number. There's no negative number when you square it, gives you um, a positive uh, square root. Sorry, when you square it, it gives you a positive number. You'll always get uh, so this is not going to work. You can't take the square root of a negative number. So then what? What happens now? What does this look like? Well, this looks like something that just doesn't touch the axis. So maybe like, I don't know, like that or like this. So it's not actually that complicated. Now, why did I put this stupid meme here? Well, it's because if you're an SL, we just stop right there and say, yep, I guess that's weird. There's no real roots. If you're an HL, however, we say, oh, but there are imaginary roots. Because all we have to do, so this is just, uh, just so you can see what we do in HL math, what do we do? We just set, we say something, we say, hey, we'll call the square root of negative one, we'll call that the letter I, and we call it an imaginary number. And then we just keep going. It turns out there's a whole branch of mathematics for that. So just so you know, if you're HL at least, we don't stop there, there are imaginary roots. I is for imaginary number. That's why I like this, you know, math's not that bad, it's making sense. Okay, we're gonna learn about imaginary numbers. Like, what? Well, yeah, in HL we continue with that. In SL we just say, ah, there's no real roots. There we go. So this is everything you need to know about discriminants. Let's do some examples. So I'll give you one here. How many solutions are there for the following function? I think it helps maybe to write down what is A, what is B, and what is C. And don't forget what the discriminant is. The discriminant is equal to B squared minus 4AC. That we're always going to do. By the way, we're going to have another example. And no matter what it is, we're just going to say it's B squared minus 4AC. And we're still going to write a, B, and C, just like we did here. Okay, so just so you know, this is going to be the same idea. I treat these questions kind of all in the same way. I just use this to figure it out. So how many solutions are there? Let's figure out what's A, what's B, what's C. A is whatever's in front of the X squared. It's 1. There's no term in front of the X, so B must be 0. And 3 is a term by itself. That must be C. Because of this, we can then figure out delta. So delta then must be, let's see, it's b squared, which is 0 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 3. Well, let's see, delta is going to be, that just cancels out, it's nothing. And this is minus 12. So what does this tell us again? Remember, it tells us that, because remember, our solutions are always x equals minus b plus or minus square root of delta over 2a. So you don't have to memorize what I just showed you before. You can figure it out. If this is negative, what happens then? Well, that means we have x equals minus b plus or minus square root of negative 12, all that over 2a. Actually, I could even go further. I can even, I should have actually put in the b. So it'll be, um, well, minus 0 plus or minus square root of negative 12, all that over 2 times 1. Uh, here's the problem. Now, this right here gives you nothing. You can't take the square root of a negative. So in other words, we can say no, whoops. I wrote that down. No real solutions. Okay, so no real solutions. There's no real roots. So this is the answer to this question here. Now, we could have seen it if you knew about transformations and about the geometry of the situation here. Um, you could see this as x squared plus 3 if I wanted to just sketch it, just in case I wanted to actually have an idea what this graph looks like. It looks like an x squared graph, except it's been raised up by 3. That's what a plus 3 means. That means it's going to be something like this. Do you notice it's not going to cross the x-axis? So that's another reason why. Just want to show the geometric, you know, sort of answer versus just a raw mathematical answer. All right, now we're told this one here has two equal real roots. What does that mean? You just have to remember what this means, right? 
you have to remember that that means that delta equals zero. That's when it's going to touch the x-axis just once. That's the key thing to know. So because of this, let's just use this. Now anything in front of the x squared is a, so that's 3k, weirdly enough. b is anything in front of the x, that's 2. c is anything by itself, that's k. So we don't panic, we just put this in here, we figure it out. So we have delta equals, let's say it's b squared, which is 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3k, times c, which is k. All right, so delta equals, let's see, 2 squared is 4, minus, uh, let's see, 4 times 3 is 12, and we have k squared. All right, so we're kind of done there. But what do we know? Remember, we know that this equals 0. So I say 0 equals 4 minus 12k squared. I can move my minus 12k squared to the left, so now I have 12k squared equals 4. Maybe I can uh, divide, so I'll say k squared equals, I'll divide everything by 4, so uh, sorry, by 12. Uh, so I'll have k squared equals, let's see, they both divide by 4 here, so 4 over 4 is 1, 12 over 4 is 3. So then I have k equals, let's see, i got to take the square root of that to undo the square. So it's going to be square root of 1 over square root of 3. But the square root of 1 is just 1. Oh, by the way, I also can't forget there's a plus minus here. And that's also going to be the case. So I can state then that k, so therefore, k must be equal to, let's see, plus or minus 1 over root 3. And there's my solution. So that tells me what k could be. k could be those two numbers. So we don't actually know precisely which one it is. We just know it has to be one of these two. We know it's either plus 1 over root 3 or minus. They both work. So even though this looked complicated, we just use this idea about discriminant. So all you got to do is really just learn this right here really well. As long as you know this right here, this tells you everything you need to know.